Hey, it's time for voiceover body shop. And tonight our guest is Mark Cashman. Dun, dun, over there. I mean, so he's, he's he, yeah, he's over, over here this way. <laughs> Say hello, Mark. Hey guys, how are you doing? Great. If you've got a question for Mark Cashman, and as he talks, it all, it's going to raise all sorts of questions. You can throw your questions. Who is this guy? Yeah, One of them. No. Yeah. <laughs> you can throw them in the Facebook It'll chat. Be a question mark. Right? Yes. Question mark. Question mark. mark. Yes. Aye, aye, aye. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I needed that right now. Yeah. Yeah. Thank you. You can go into our Facebook chat room and ask your questions there. And if you're uh, watching on YouTube, you can, there's a chat room in YouTube too. You can use that. Jeff Holman is sitting out there somewhere and he is getting all that stuff down and get those questions to us. We're going to talk about directing and how to improve your, your, your vocal performance and interpreting scripts and all sorts of stuff. Tips upon tips upon tips upon tips. Or as I mentioned, you know, that when we all get together, the stuff, the voiceover stuff just oozes out. So go grab a bucket. Useful stuff. Yes. Anyway, time for voiceover body shop right now. From the outer reaches, they came. Bearing the knowledge of what it takes to properly record your voiceover audio. And together, from the center of the VO universe, they bring it to you now. George Widom, the engineer to the VO stars, a Virginia Tech grad with the skills to build, set up, and maintain the professional VO studios of the biggest names in VO today. And you, Dan Leonard, the voiceover home studio master, a professional voice talent with the knowledge and experience to help you create a professional sounding home VO studio. And each week, they allow you into their world, bringing you talks with the biggest names in the voiceover world today, letting you ask your questions, and giving you the latest information to make the most of your voiceover business. Welcome to VoiceOver Body Shop. VoiceOver Body Shop is brought to you by VoiceOverEssentials.com, home of Harlan Hogan Signature Products, Source Elements, Remote Studio Connections for Everyone, VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website isn't a pain in the butt. VOHeroes.com, become a hero to your clients with award-winning voiceover training. JMC Demos, when quality matters. And VoiceOver Extra, your daily resource for VO success. And now, live to drive from their super secret clubhouse and studio in Sherman Oaks, California. Here are the guys. Well, hello there. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Whittem. And this is VoiceOver. Body Shop. Or VO. BS. Well, welcome to another week of VoiceOver Body Shop. And we're together in the same place for once, which is. How good. did you end up with almost the same color shirt? Because I told you to wear an orange shirt. Wait, who changed first? <laughs> I, I was wearing this when you came in, so it doesn't really matter. <laughs> and you were all over the place this weekend. You were like up in Monterey or? Yeah, I was in the Monterey area. I was riding a bicycle around the Laguna Seca Raceway. Ooh, cool. At least part of the time. Yeah. That was surreal. Do you know anything about that racetrack? The corkscrew. Yeah, you, the corkscrew. Mm -hmm. yeah. I was camping in a, in a camping spot. As, it was like being on the top of a multi-tiered cake. Yeah, yeah. And we were at the very top and looking down on this corkscrew. The first morning, we watched the road racing team come down that corkscrew on their road bicycles. Yeah. It was surreal. Then I got to do it. <laughs> but th then I got to do a ride Sunday morning that was my race, single-speed mountain bike class. And they made us ride up the damn thing. <laughs> it was like... It was. Did mountain. they tell you they were going to do that? Well, or? it is mountain biking. They made us <laughs> ride a lot of hills. But anyway, okay. I made it back just in the nick of time after having to make an emergency stop today for a VIP to <laughs> unpack his Studio Bricks booth. Not put it together, just unpack it and get it in the yeah. apartment so right. it wouldn't get ruined in, out on the street. Including the door, which requires an honor guard. And thankfully, said <laughs> VIP is an able-bodied man and helped me carry it in. Which was, that door is massive. Anyway, yeah. we're here. That's right. We made it. All right. Yeah. So if you wonder what goes on in our lives day to day. You just know, normal stuff. Just normal, <laughs> crazy stuff. Uh, anyway, <laughs> it's time to introduce our guest who's been with us many times because he's a riot. He is a great director. But 
but he knows he, stuff. He, he knows a lot of stuff and he's <laughs> yeah. written a lot of stuff, but with over 40 years in the voiceover industry, Mark Cashman has written hundreds of articles about voice acting for a bunch of publications. I won't mention what some of them are. Uh, he's in demand for VO conventions and conferences when they actually happen as a keynote speaker and a great master class instructor. I've been in those classes and I know what they're like and has authored one of the top selling books on voice acting V O O H. Uh, oh, that's right. That's how you say it. Tips, tricks, tools, and techniques to start and sustain your voice over career. Let's welcome back to voice over body shop. We'd love having him here, but he's at his place in Stevenson ranch. Mark Cashman. Welcome back. Hey guys, how are you doing? Doing good. Can you hear me? Okay. We Just dandy. Five by five. Excellent. Excellent. Nice. I'm so glad to see you guys together. You're usually remote and, 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 and George is gallivanting all over the country and you're <laughs> having to stay, you know, in the VOBS studios, keeping things going. Yeah. You know? And, and, and then uh, George calls in every so often and says, hey, how's it going? And you say, <laughs> great. And We've yeah. gotten so used to working in multiple locations. I, I was probably pretty close to calling in from the beach today, but I just didn't want <laughs> to push it a little that tough. far. Yeah, a little <laughs> tough. Anyway, yeah. so welcome back to the show. This is Thank one you. I don't think I've ever asked you before. And that's how did you get into the voiceover business? Oh, my. I always ask everybody that, but I don't think I've ever asked you that. It's in your you know, book, it's, right? It, it's, it, yes. It, well, actually, no, I, I, I didn't even go into that in my book. Uh, I, I, I didn't want to make it. I didn't really didn't want to make it biographical. I, I, yeah. I just basically just wanted to make it practical and just have a lot of, you know, information in it for everybody. Uh, but in a nutshell, very, very simply, um, I got bitten by the radio bug by listening to two people, Stan Freeberg and Dick Orkin. And they inspired me. And the more I heard them and the more I listened to them, the more I wanted to emulate them. And, and that's why I came out to Los Angeles over 40 years ago to do what they did, to write and produce radio commercials. And I knew nobody here. I knew, didn't know how to do it or anything. I just knew that I wanted to do it. And, um, and I actually did it. Um, uh, after, after a few years, I finally got enough clients to be able to basically do what I do and I've been doing it literally now for 40 years. And, uh, but I came out to Los Angeles just wanting to be a radio producer. What's really weird was is after I started getting involved in writing and producing and casting, a number of my clients would ask me to voice their commercials. And I initially said, Oh no, 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 no. I, I work with the top talent. I, they're great. I, I, I they're pros. I, I, you, you want them, not me. But they kept insisting and insisting and insisting. So I realized I'd have to get up to speed in terms of being a voice actor. So I joined one of the very first voice acting uh, uh, workout groups. It was in the mid '80s, and I was one of the I was in one of the first groups that ever that ever got started. And we uh, uh, got together once a week for three hours a night every week. And I did it for six years, six years of constant, constant working uh, with this group. And um, it was just great. So while I was writing and producing and casting, I was working on becoming a better and better and better voice actor. And that's basically how I got into it. It was kind of a sideways thing. I didn't know anybody. It wasn't nepotism. Um, I didn't win any competition. I just decided I wanted to do this. And and there was nothing that was going to deter me. But I'm kind of like that. Just lost you. Lost you. Lost your audio. Oh, can you hear There you go. This? Now you're back. Okay. All right. Uh, so, uh, oh, because you have the microphone has to we'll be. Have to, we'll have to figure out the, uh, the mic switching. Okay. Make sure it doesn't follow the camera. That's we'll right. get that right. We'll get, we, we know how to do this. <laughs> We've only been doing this for 10 years. I keep changing the way we do the show, though. But that's And that's true. not your fault. No, no, <laughs> no, no, it's not. But it's getting better and better. That's the whole thing. That's Usually. the most important thing. On average. Yeah, that's right. On average. It creeps yeah. up. Yeah. So you're, you're massively experienced in doing the voice work, directing, writing, and all this stuff. And now you're, are you, are you still teaching a class in, in college? 
You know, I I did the college classes um, uh, when the pandemic hit. I uh, everybody, you know, just kind of went there, as you know, went their separate ways, and everything was doing remote. And um, they haven't quite gotten to. I haven't figured out what to do there. So I've been teaching at the college level for going on almost twenty years now. So. I've just decided I've been there, done that. I've been at UCLA. I've been at USC. I've been at Cal Arts, and I think I'm I'm just going to take a take a vacation from take that a, for a while. Take a sabbatical, and, and yeah, sabbatical. <laughs> that's exactly it. And and um, but I've got my classes, my online classes, and I'm going to be starting my in studio classes. I'm doing one on one coaching, and um, and and I I'm so lucky I get to work with people all over the world, not just the U.S. So that's been fun. And and also, oh, I've got some uh, uh, some some uh, events coming up, but I'll talk about that at the end toward when we when we wrap up. Absolutely. All right. All right. You know, we see a lot of people getting into the business these days. I mean, if if you go on Facebook, you'd think there's a hundred thousand people considering themselves voice actors. Um, why are so many people? I mean, I mean, you talk to a lot of these people. I talk to them. What are you hearing from people that makes them want to do this so much? Well, you know, it's all timing. You know that uh, that last March, when the pandemic came down, when the, when the hammer came down, um, all of a sudden you had millions of people uh, just uh, completely confined in four walls and saying, "What am I going to do? What am I going to do with my life? I'm not particularly happy with my job. Uh, what would I? What could I possibly do working from home? At, oh, voiceover." I can open my mouth. I can read words. I can speak a, a, a language. Yeah, I can do that. So I have to tell you that over the past 18 months, you've had a deluge of people uh, 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 coming into the industry, uh, uh, wanting to be part of the industry, but really have not come from that part of the industry. They are not actors. They're not singers. They're not performers. They're not public speakers. They've been doing other things and they just decided they would try out voiceover because again, they were quarantined. Um, that's going to shift. That's going to, that's going to die down after a while. People are going to start to go back to work and we're going to be having the, the normal influx of people trying to break into the industry. But one of the main reasons that so many people are interested in this business is because it is so now ubiquitous and very familiar. People are starting to be very familiarized with all things audio, whether not just commercials, they've been seeing those for years, but other things like e-learning projects and explainer videos and, and, and a more animated series and, um, and, and the endless, endless, endless procession of video games. And of course, audiobooks as well. Basically, the bottom line is the opportunities have become more and more. And so that has attracted more and more people. Yeah. So it's just a, a democratization of the industry itself. It's just a little bit more approachable to get into it. People think also that celebrities rule. And I just want to put that that notion to, to, uh, to bed. Uh, when you see a celebrity doing a commercial or, or whatever, you're just seeing the very, very tip of the tip of the iceberg. Only 1% of all voice work, maybe 2% max, is done by celebrities, but I'm pretty sure it's just 1%. 99% is done by unknowns doing a lot of non-broadcast stuff. Yeah. I, I worked with a lady who is a Broadway performer like that. Mm -hmm. Her life is eight shows a week, and that was the plug was pulled on that whole industry. Yep. And she built out a really nice voiceover booth in her parents' farm in Iowa. Nice yep. and quiet. There. And she's like, I'm, well, <laughs> she, actually, that was a challenge. The, mm. There was farm machinery ah, all yeah. around and their cow, farm. So we, they had to be soundproof. Mm. They did a lot of work. And then long, long story short, she's got a great studio there. And she's like, well, I'm going to own this house someday. So it's worth the investment. But I mean, I didn't know I'd be working with Broadway actors like for this. Oh, absolutely. Absolutely. As a matter of fact, Broadway actors are, are, are very, very much in demand, particularly for commercial particularly if yeah. you listen to commercials really, really closely, you're going to hear a lot of Broadway actors, not just actors, but actors slash singers, actor, actually triple threat, actors, singer, dancers, but you don't have to dance on voiceover, but, but you're, you're, you're again, being an actor and being a singer 
gives you such a huge advantage over, well, again, half the people in this business <laughs> are not actors and singers. They're, they're, they, 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 they just didn't come from that. Right. That's not to say that they're not going to be successful because truthfully, I think half of all voice work is cast not because you're a great actor. It's cast because they just love the sound of your voice. Yeah. Or the way you, or the way you read something in a particular way. Exactly. Which exactly. We'll in a little bit. Exactly. <clears throat> Excuse me. If by chance you're just joining us right now here on Voice Over Body Shop, we're talking with Mark Cashman, who is a writer, director, uh, voice actor, instructor, all these things that you do. Um, and if you've got a question for him, throw him in our chat room, either in Facebook or on YouTube, and he will be happy to answer that, especially questions about performance. Cause that's what Mark and I usually talk about is how do you, how do you make something a little bit different? We have a script we're going to work on a little bit later. Yeah. 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 It's going to be a fun script. We always do that when you, when you're on and you usually lead me some other place, but, uh, so with all these people coming into the business right now, what do you see is the biggest mistake that most newbies make? Just say hiring the wrong coach. I know you want to say it. <laughs> I don't think that's, I don't think that's, that's, that's true. Uh, uh, overall, there, there, there might be some exceptions, but, but, yeah. but overall, I don't think that's true. I, th I, th you know, I don't know who, I don't know. Is there, is it a possible that, 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 that nobody, that, that could be somebody who makes no mistakes? It's not possible. Yeah, I mean, we all I mean. make mistakes. We all make wrong choices. Sometimes we all, we're all, uh, uh, uh we want to, we just want it. We want it. We want it. We want it. We want it now. We want it soon. We want to get it done. We're, uh, I guess one big mistake are ba basically people who are do they want to do their demo and they're not ready for it. Yeah, that's a huge, huge thing. Um, and then they they're they're regretful because they spent all that time and all that money putting it together, and they should have just waited another six months, a, a year, whatever. Uh, 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 they should have waited. So, yeah. yeah. So a lot of people just want to, they just want to, they, they want to keep going. going. They want to get, uh, uh, come on. I paid the class. I did the, I did the, the class. Classes, I bought, bought the, the gear. <laughs> I've been doing this for a whole six months. That's right. That's Why right. Why am I not booking? Why am I not booking? And I, I get those I, all the time because we yeah. don't think it's their equipment. So exactly. They, they and, <laughs> and that and it's just, it's just not the case. Um, I, you You've we've mentioned this in my previous uh, uh, VOBS uh, uh, appearances, but um, I'm the only voice acting teacher in the world who gives out report cards. Hmm. Everybody is graded in eight different categories on a one to ten scale. And it's basically like an X-ray of your abilities. It shows where you're strong. It shows where you're weak. And it makes recommendations should you want to continue. And that's basically what most people don't get when they finish a class, if a workshop, a webinar, whatever the case may be. After they're done, the Your instructor says, back. good luck. Good job. Good luck. Good luck. <laughs> but they don't get any feedback. They don't get any specific feedback. Very true. And that's where my report card comes in because it gives them, it's like an x-ray. It's an objective analysis of their current skill sets, their current skill sets. It doesn't mean that they can't get better but it just measures their current skill sets. And I remind people when you were in a uh, first grade, second grade, third, when you were in sixth grade and you graduated elementary school, did that mean that you were going to go out and start working? No, you were in elementary school. You yeah. still have some schooling to go. When you're done with junior high school, you're going to go out and start working. No, you're going to go on to high school and you graduate high school. Now, some people say, well, I could start working after high school. Yeah, you could. Absolutely. Or I could go to college and really, really, really learn what I want to do and spend another four years. Now, does that mean that you have to spend 12 years of training in voiceover to be professional? No, but you don't, you can't just do, as you said, six months and say, come on, what's right. going on? Yeah. When do you know someone's ready? You know, because, you know, when you're working with people, you're like, you're ready to do a demo. What, what keys you into? the fact that they're ready 
when I don't have to ask them to do the same things over and over and over and over again. Mm -hmm. I need to tell peace. I need to tell a person once what they need to do. And I need to know that they heard it and they're going to do what I just asked them to do. It's a very simple thing. This is what I need you to do. Can you do that in the next take? Yes. Good. Let's do that. If they can do that, they're ready. And if they can't do it, they're not ready. It's pretty simple. I mean, most, most people don't get doing, you know, they just think it's reading that it's, you know, and, and that they need to project their voice. Mm -hmm. Of course, I mean, these are all the mistakes that, you know, that I see people making. Mm -hmm. they, they get too close to the mic. Mm -hmm. They're like, I have to be like this to do voiceover. Mm -hmm. and, yep. you know, Absolutely. Yeah. And, and that's just it. And, well, and of course, now the beauty is, is that with instruction, with one-on-one -on -one instruction, none of that is necessary. Everybody, you know, if, if, if they make, if they, if they do something untoward, if they do something that they're not supposed to be doing, then they're just gently corrected and said, okay, on the next take, let's try this instead of that. Yeah. Yeah. And, 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 and do it that way. There, there is not one habit that can't be broke, one bad habit that can't be broken. There is not one good thing that you can do that can't be practiced and, 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 and done. Best practices. It's, it, it's, I always remind people, this is not brain surgery. This is not rocket science. This is very, very practical things that you can do. Very, very practical. Uh, I record all of my sessions. And so that I can, my students can listen back and see how they did and get a really good objective sense of how they're sounding and how they're listening. That's one of the biggest things. Again, I go back to what we just talked about before. A lot of people don't listen. Many times words go in one ear and out the other. They'll listen to the director, but they won't listen to themselves. But listening requires listening on multiple level. Yeah. So, so listening is a huge, huge thing. What are, you, what are you saying? He's saying that you have to be able to listen. I'm just kidding. Yes. What? Yes. Yes. I work with two of the <laughs> subtlest, <laughs> two of the subtlest guys in the business. Yes. Yes. Thank you. In fact, um, uh, why didn't you say uh, say say that again? Say it again. I can't because I wasn't listening. <laughs> Thank listening. you. We're here all week, try the veal. Okay. <laughs> listening is, is possibly one of the most important skills you can have in voiceover because totally. one, you, ha you have to be able to listen to the director. You've got to listen to other people. You've got to listen to what other styles are. And you got to be able to listen to instructions, which is what you're saying is, you know, can they follow instructions or are they, are they getting what it is that's necessary from, from a director? Mm -hmm. I also liken it to being a great jazz artist. Mm -hmm. Everybody I know that's an amazing musician listens to probably as much music as much as, they, as that they play, if not more. They're Absolutely. listening. So Absolutely. knowing, knowing, like if you watch, if you skip commercials on your on your TV, do we still use those? Uh, I yeah. don't. Uh, then you're not learning. From the no, commercials. absolutely. As a matter of fact, uh, thank you for 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 mentioning that, uh, uh, I, because um, here's a just a suggestion um, for for everybody out there. Uh, if you while you're watching TV, I'd really really love it if you could invest forty nine bucks in a pair of wireless headphones. Wireless headphones. That means you can. Watch TV and listen to TV. You can walk all around the house. But the most important thing is when you have headphones on, you're hearing voiceover like no get out. You're hearing mm -hmm. it completely differently. Without the visuals. Yeah, that's, that's right. Without the visuals. And as a matter of fact, I know it sounds counterintuitive, but when a TV commercial comes on, I want you to close your eyes and not watch it, but listen. And if you have a DVR, then you can rewind it and you can listen to it over and over and over again. My poor sainted wife um, uh, uh, loves it when I rewind the commercials and listen to it over and over and over again. <laughs> she just Is that loves why you it. have wireless headphones? <laughs> she made you buy this, didn't she? Yeah, 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 yeah she did. So, so, uh, That's a yeah. really great idea. Yeah. So, I, I strongly, strongly suggest uh, anybody, when you're watching TV, listen, 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 listen to the subtlety of, of uh, VO. And as a matter of fact, 
I'm going to, I'm going to uh, uh, point up, um, what you call it? A, um, um, hold on one second. I well, just, while you're saying, while you're not, saying that, I, not, while I, I can identify who's doing the commercial oh, I can far too. better if I'm not watching. Like if, it, if it's just in the other room or in the background, like, yes. oh, so and so, oh, that's so and so. But if I'm watching it, their voice kind of disappears a little bit to me anyway. I actually like oh, yeah. extra effort to tune in to who, to the voice and what's being, how it's being performed. Absolutely. Again, close your eyes and just listen. And literally you could, you could talk along with them. Again, you can rewind, rewind, rewind as much as you possibly can. But also I want you to listen very, very carefully. Lately, there's a trend going on. Uh, I'm always constantly listening to either TV commercials when they're, uh, uh, when I'm watching TV or uh, radio, but there is lately a trend going on. And everybody, if you're listening, if you watch commercials, listen to commercials, uh, uh, constantly you're going to hear this trend going on it's not for radio it's only for tv and this and it's in it's in the delivery and there's one word for this delivery and it's called chill chill if you listen to the allstate campaign uh this uh, a young african-american uh, woman is doing uh, the, the vo for the allstate campaign and if you listen to any of those Allstate commercials, any of those current Allstate commercials, and listen to her, her delivery, it is chill with a capital C. Mm. Now, not, not relaxed lying in a hammock. Not, I just did a dube relaxed, but, <laughs> but chill. Present, but chill. In other words, the, vocal, the, the volume is pulled back. And if you listen very, very carefully to her delivery, you're going to hear what I mean. And then you're going to hear that emulated in other campaigns that I've heard. They're all copying the Allstate campaign. But does it have, does it still have a lot of pitch changing? No. Up and down? No. Very, it's, it's, but it, it's not it's, monotone. It's just, but it's, chill, just so. it's like a it, smaller range of notes, I guess. That's exactly right. It's, it's very, very gentle. It's very, but again, it's in the volume. It's in the volume, George. Yeah. It's in the volume. It's 75% volume. Right now, I'm using my 100% voice. And this is what most people do when they audition. They use their 100% voice, their full voice. But if you listen really, really carefully, you're going to hear a lot of delivery. At least 25% of that delivery is going to be pulled back to that 75% range, that quieter, not as projected volume. Chill very chill i i've been using i adapted your 100 percent voice to describe that to my clients now because i want them to understand that all right give me a read at your 100 percent voice and then i yeah. explain what i mean by that um and i and that's now I re i'm remembering now we're more i got that because like i know this term why do i know this term yeah so thanks for reminding me <laughs> absolutely absolutely yeah it's it's just it's it's wild and it's a trend it really is trending i heard it on etsy uh the other day on a new a new spot and and another spot i didn't even write it down i usually have a pad right next to my uh, to the sofa that i write down uh, the things where again i can trend and usually i'll I'll end up once I, I find that thing, I will, when I'm doing, let's say a session with one of my students, I'll share that on iSpot TV and I'll do a, I'll do a share zoom session and just play the spot for them so they can, they can hear the delivery and hear what I'm talking about. Uh, but, but yeah, that's, 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 it's very trending. Yeah. I've, I've always been of the opinion. And if you're watching TV and you turned off the sound and you knew what was going on and really appreciated it. And then if you turned off the picture and listened to the audio and couldn't tell what's going on and appreciated it. What you have is a totally cohesive production, you know, and you will find that with, you know, any good movie or any good television show and yeah. stuff like that. So, you should be able to like eliminate 50% of the information and right. still, exactly. still get the, get everything that you need. Yeah. Yep. 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 Once again, we're talking with Mark Cashman, who is a, a writer, director, voice actor, voice coach, all these things, if you've got a question for him on performance, because we're going to get into some performance after the break here, uh, now would be a great time to throw it in the chat room in Facebook or on YouTube. And he loves answering questions. And uh, we'll get right back to those questions and a script that he picked out for me right after these very important messages. Don't go away. Before time began, there was VOBS.TV. Watch or else. 
Well, hello there. I bet you weren't expecting to hear some big-voiced announcer guy on your new orientation training for Snapchat, were you? This is Virgin Radio. Well, okay, we're not that innocent. There's jeans for wearing and there's jeans for working. Dickies, because I ain't here to look pretty. She's a champion of progressive values, a leader for California, and a voice for America. It's smart. It's a phone. It's a smartphone. But it's so much more. It's a, the files are ready. Don't forget to pick up the eggs. What time is hockey practice? Check out this song. It's the end of the road for Rick. Oh, it's you and me, Rick. When hope is lost. The I-8 from BMW. Who said saving the planet couldn't be stylish? Hey, it's J. Michael Collins. Bet you think I'm going to try and sell you a demo now, huh? I think they speak for themselves. But I will give you my email. It's jmichael at jmcvoiceover.com. Now, if Dan will stop waxing his mustache for a minute, we'll get back to the show. As voice actors, we need to hear the clear, transparent, and honest sound of our voices. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 provide both that accurate, transparent sound with enhanced mid-range audio, less bass, and the creature comforts voice workers deserve. Clearly different from traditional studio headphones, the upper mids and highs are clear as a bell, no muffling or cross-bleeding between frequencies. Like a pair of studio monitors, the low is there, but at the same level as the rest of the spectrum. They're comfortable like no other phones I've worn. That's because Harlan used actual leather for the pads. It's like putting on a pair of leather gloves for your ears. They're also very light for their size, as Harlan made them from aluminum instead of plastic. The headband is flexible like a watch band, and the plug comes out for walking away. Get the only headphones designed for VO. Harlan Hogan Signature Series Voice Optimized Headphones 2.0 for just $149 with free shipping from voiceoveressentials.com. Getting into VO is quite an accomplishment. And accomplishing anything in the world of performance can be really tough. Getting great information is tough. Getting the right advice and mentoring is tough. Simply getting ahead is tough. And the best way to get ahead is to simply get started. Let's make it simple. To get started in voiceover, the best way is with VO Hero's free online course, Getting Started in VoiceOver. You'll learn everything you need to know to create a successful, satisfying, and profitable voiceover career. The link is really simple. Here it is. VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Again, that's VOHeroes.com forward slash start. Get ahead in voiceover simply by getting started. Go to VOHeroes.com forward slash start. This is Bill Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem. VOBS.TV. And we're back with Mark Cashman here on Voice Over Body Shop. And uh, again, if you got a question, throw it in the chat room because we will get to those questions in a bit. Now, you you published a book. <coughs> pardon me. Bless you. Bless uh, you. V O O H, uh, which I remember you know reading the you know, the original edition of it on a plane because you let me have the galleys for it, and it was like, yeah, I've heard him tell this story. Yeah, I've heard him tell this story, but nobody else has heard that story before. <laughs> So it's, you know, and they're, and they're, they're, they're great, uh, you know, uh, anecdotes about really what it's like to be in the voiceover business. But one of the things you've been doing is you've been putting 365 tips one a day in various places. What, what was involved in that? You know, that's wild. A, a few years ago, I was talking to my daughter and, and, and said, I, I said, you know, I, I need to establish a, um, a, a web presence, um, a social media presence. And she said, Dad, the only way to, for you to do that is to be posting on at least four different platforms, LinkedIn, Facebook, Twitter, and Instagram, and doing it on a daily basis. And I said, well, I can't come up with a, a, a blog. and I can't reinvent the wheel every day. I don't have time. I have to work. I have stuff to do. She said, well, you got to figure out something that you can do that you can post every day. It's not going to take off, take up a whole bunch of your time. So I figured, okay, what can I do? What can I do? What can I do? Okay. How about this? I can start off with 10 tips, 10 tips. I can, I can post a tip a day for 10 days. How about that? She says, well, okay, that's, that's a, that's a good start. So I came up with 10 tips, but 
after, well, by the time I got to nine, I said, well, am I going to stop at just 10? Said, no. So I just did another 10. So do 20. Well, by the time I got close to 20, I said, well, am I going to stop at 20? No, let's just keep going. So I got to 50 and I said, well, this is silly. I'm not going to stop at 50. And then I went to a hundred. Okay. Yeah, let's do a hundred. But then I figured, wait, 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 why just stop at a hundred? There are 365 days in the year. Do you not know enough to post one tip a day for 365 days? You've been at this for 40 years. I think that you could, you could do this. And so that's basically, it, it wasn't so much of a challenge, but, but, uh, but that's basically how it evolved. And, um, and so, yes, I've been, t I've been posting one voiceover tip every single day for the past three years. Plus, I think going on, this is my fourth year, um, every day, every single day, um, on Facebook, Instagram, LinkedIn, and Twitter and multiple pages on, <clears throat> excuse me, multiple pages on LinkedIn and Facebook. Um, and and I've, it's just, it's, and, and so what's great about it is once you do in 365, you can do it every year there. After all, though, 2020 was a leap year. I had to do 366. So <laughs> I had to do, add one more uh, uh, to, to the mix, but, um, but yeah, so, so now all I do is, is just again, every year, just it's, it's basically the, the 365 tips are, they're classic. They cover everything performance. And, what's today's tip then? Oh, today's tip was, uh, what's today's tip? Today's tip was, was a, was, a um, what you call it? A, a quote from Dawes Butler. And okay. occasionally, occasionally some of my tips are quotes from really brilliant people. So, uh, so Dawes Butler, uh, it was, it was something to the effect of, um, uh, voice acting is a lot like jazz. Uh, there's, there's music in the, in, in, in the cadence and the delivery and the words are more of interpolation than interpretation. So it, it, I, I, that, I didn't get the exact quote there, but if you go on LinkedIn or Facebook or Instagram or Twitter, you'll see the quote from Dawes Butler, who is brilliant. And, and truthfully it was my, my biggest regret was I never got a chance to study with him. When, when I was living in LA and he was still alive, uh, if I could go back and, and do it all over again, I would have sought him out when I first came to LA and just try to get as much as I can because he was brilliant. He was yeah. absolutely brilliant. All right. Well, I've been looking forward to this all day because whenever you're on, you get a chance to direct me reading copy. This is always a little entertaining for me. Yeah. Well, yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Not being a voice actor, I mean, you probably see this stuff all the time. No, I don't get to see the direction, actually. Oh, okay. Yeah, yeah. All right, so you gave me this, and I said, give me the weirdest piece of copy you possibly can. <laughs> and, you know, and after a while, if you've, been, if you've been printing out copy, you know, you usually have about the Eiffel Tower's worth after a while. <laughs> uh, so you picked out, this one's called Quick Trip. Um. So I'm going to read through it once. Do you recommend that he does a cold read first or just read it to himself first? No, read it to yourself first. Okay. Read it to yourself first. While he's, while he's doing that, George, you and I will just, we'll, we'll, we'll have a little, a little chat here. So. Do you yeah. notice that I don't have a, a windscreen on the microphone? I, that's what I was just going to say, I was I just, I was, I was just going to, my, my, my pet peeve is, the, is, the, is <laughs> the, the windscreen, the, the, the condom. Or, or or the windscreen. Um, I've I, I I I pride myself on. I know that the windscreen in, uh, 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 industrial complex is not very happy uh, with me, uh, only because I've explained to people that microphones, when they are designed, they don't design them when with windscreens in mind. They don't design them with condoms in mind. They design them to pick up your voice. Now. I have a question for you, sir. A specific question for you. That's a, that's mm -hmm. totally different than than our than our day today, which you can answer either today or after the, okay. the off off hours. Fire away. I've noticed over the years that that mics like the Neumann, which have the figure eight uh, pattern inside a booth, are so unbelievably sensitive that they can pick up a mouse fart. Yeah. 
But I've noticed that 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 shotguns have, and tell me if I'm wrong about this, a little bit of of noise rejection on the on the barrel of the mic, and it's they're not as sensitive as the figure eights. Am I? Is this delusional? Yeah. I, well, is this figure eight is another deal. Yeah. So figure eight is sensitive on the front and the back, but not sensitive around the middle, like around okay. the center. So that. In some sense, in some cases, that's actually a really good thing. And in other cases, that's a really bad thing. So it depends on the situation. But the shotgun mic picks up a lot less on the sides. It has a little bit of a pickup in the back, but it's definitely a better choice to reject more background noise than a standard condenser or a large diaphragm like a cardioid, right. like a Neumann TL-103. Those are definitely the ones that are hard. I think... I think our student is ready. I, I, I am ready. Mr. Thank Hans. you for answering that question. My perception was correct. I'm, right. I'm not crazy. I'm not delusional. Thank not you. Crazy. Thank you for answering that tech question. Now we'll get back to the our artistry of voice work here. Okay. All right, my friend, whenever you're ready, whenever you're ready. Okay. George, yeah. you're going to stop. Uh, uh, I know you didn't. I mean, uh, uh, Dan, you didn't time yourself. I got the clock. I'll keep you honest. Okay. You have to be out of 45. Okay. So, uh, so, so just to run it down and we're going to call this a uh, quick trip. Take one. Okay. There's a place where people wake gently to ocean waves, singing birds, children playing. It is paradise. Then there are places where people actually have to work for a living, which means getting out of bed early, getting dressed and getting the best hot beverage you've ever had from cafe Karuba. Coffee, cappuccinos, ah, yes, a little hot beverage perks up brains and eyelids and outlooks. But what about tummy? Hungry tummy needs more than hot beverage. Fear not, tummy. Buy any hot beverage from Cafe Karuba and Quick Trip will throw in a glazer donut for free. Ah, tummy like glazer donut. Brain likes hot beverage and free glazer donut. Maybe this is paradise after all. (laughs) <laughs> great first take dan great first take all right so time wise not bad sir not bad you're in the ballpark we came out to 47 and change ah no problem don't worry about that i've edited that out of course 47 and change you're in the ballpark already so you just need to shave three seconds off your next read you'll be good to go all right so you don't have to worry about the sfx cues as being part of that no because no, they're I- underneath they're gotcha. always underneath. They're not in the clear. That's it's gotcha. not it's gotcha. it's not a, a real time there. So right, right. usually, virtually every effect is underneath you, as yeah. you're saying it. Yeah. So you don't have to have to lay out. Now, technically, truthfully, actually, it was really more forty six and a half, only because you took this huge beat uh, uh, between paradise and 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 the next line. Then there are places. So so technically, you're only about a half second over. So you're in the ballpark already. Your mm-hmm. timing was great. But Dan, you did so many good things in that first take. And as always, what I want to do is I want to reinforce all the good things you did. And then I want to ask you to make some adjustments okay. into the next take. All right. So okay. first of all, uh, right at the top, you understood where paradise is. So culturally, where is paradise or heaven? What direction? up and and being on earth what uh, if you're on on heaven and you want to get down to earth where where, what direction do you have to go to get to earth down exactly so when you listen to your pitch your intonation the first line you were in your upper register there's a place where people wake gently to ocean waves singing birds children playing and you were in your happy place dan and then there are places where people actually have to work for a living and you descended down into your mid to lower range and your voice changed, your tone changed, you'll hear it. So thank you for making that adjustment. That's exactly what you needed to do. You're in heaven in the first part and you're back down to earth in the second. So some nice snark in there on two, you want to make it a little more snarky, you go ahead and do that. And you stuck with it, my friend. You understood misdirection, which means getting out of bed early, getting dressed and getting, and you stood right there. And now the best hot beverage. Now we're back to to paradise again but when you listen back you were in paradise to the to uh, paradise squared you were in paradise and i just need you back in paradise again okay you just got a little bit too big in that middle section the best hot beverage you've ever had you put exclamation points on there where there weren't any okay 
All right. We'll just go back to paradise again. The best hot beverage you've ever had from Cafe Caruba. Coffee, cappuccinos. That's what that phrase is. Coffee, right. cappuccinos. Let that hang. Gotcha. And move and move through that. Coffee, cappuccinos. Ah, yes. Coffee, cappuccinos. Ah, yes. Now you took a sip. You took a huh? sip inside there. You said coffee, cappuccinos. <laughs> ah, yes. Let's take the sip on take two. Mm hmm but take it cleaner. Clean whenever up. you're doing mouth noises, whenever right. you're doing mouth noises on, on microphone, on <laughs> microphone, yeah. don't do anything disgusting. Keep right. it clean. Keep it clean. As if you're sipping through a straw, no slurping, no slurping, no nothing like this that makes it sound people go, you no ooh. Okay. Right. Clean, right. clean, clean. All right. Well, one more take because we got a couple of questions we want to get to. Okay, but. all right, but I want to do a couple of more things here: brains okay. and eyelids and outlooks. Series of three, you found it: brains okay. and eyelids and outlooks. You took up, you took the, the steps up there. That's what you want to do. But it says primitive voice, primitive voice. You understood that you're caveman, yes? Mm -hmm. The conceit is cavemen speak English, which is silly. But when cavemen speak English, they speak it not grammatically correct. How are we going to make that sentence not grammatically correct? But what about tummy? Hungry tummy, what? Hungry tummy? Right. Give me that yeah. sentence. Ungrammatically. Tummy needs more than hot beverage. No, no, no. If it's grammatically incorrect, what are we going to do with the word needs? Um, need. Yes. Now give me that line. Hungry tummy need more than hot beverage. Yes, exactly. Because cavemen don't speak English correctly. Yes. Right? I okay. That's our, that's our conceit. Uh, uh, fear not, Tommy, buy any hot, bu hot beverage from Cafe Group or Quick Triple Throw in a Glazer Donut for free. Thank you for hitting free. Thank mm -hmm. you. Make sure you continue to hit free. But you don't go back to the primitive voice, Dan. It doesn't say back to primitive voice. It still stay right there. Ah, Tommy likes Glazer yeah. Donut. Brain likes hot beverage and free Glazer Donut. Hit free. Underline is and after on the last line. Is and after. Maybe yeah. this is paradise after all. Hit those. Underline those two so, you've, so you remember them. Mark your copy. Mark that copy. What are we talking about here? This is called bill. This is what I call a bookend copy. Bookend copy states something at the beginning of a story and restates it at or toward the end. Look at the beginning. It is paradise. Look at the end. Maybe this is paradise after all, because it follows the mantra of advertising. The mantra of advertising is tell them what you're going to tell them, then tell them, and then tell them what you just told them. <laughs> That's the mantra. <laughs> that's that's way it's that way at any speed. That's the way it works. That's the way it works. Here we go. We're gonna do this again. We're gonna call this is gonna be quick trip. Now you got your notes and stand by. It's gonna be quick trip. Take two. There are places where people actually have to oh wait, I started in the wrong place. Okay. Yeah. There is a place where people wake gently to take open. take two. Stop suffering. Put land on place. Okay. Land on place. There is a place where people wake gently to ocean waves, singing birds, children playing. It is paradise. Then there are places where people actually have to work for a living, which means getting out of bed early, getting dressed, and getting the best hot beverage you've ever had from Cafe Caruba. Coffee, cappuccinos. <sighs> ah, yes, a little hot beverage perks up brains and eyelids and outlooks. But what about tummy? Tummy need more than hot beverage. Fear not, Tummy. Buy any hot beverage from Cafe Caruba and Quick Trip will throw in a Glazer Donut for free. Ah, Tummy like Glazer Donut, brain like hot beverage, and free Glazer Donut. Maybe this is paradise after all. After all. After all. After all. Do, do pick up Ah, Tummy likes, put the F back on likes. You're not the caveman. Right. Ah, ah Tummy likes Glazer Donut, brain likes hot beverage, and free Glazer Donut. Maybe this is paradise after all. After all. After all. Yes. Maybe this is paradise. Give me that line. Maybe this is paradise after all. Maybe this is paradise after all. You forgot to underline <laughs> is and after. Yeah. So, Maybe this is paradise after all. Exactly. Exactly. Right. And the only reason you mark your copy is just to remind yourself where those emphases go. You, right. If you mark your copy, look, we are multitasking behind this microphone. We're doing a million different things all at the same time. Mark your copy. It's one less thing you've got to worry about or concern yourself about or, or remember for that matter. Mark your copy so you know where your emphases go and you, and you know how to navigate through it. 
marking your copy marks on your copy are like navigational buoys. If you've ever been on a motorboat in a, in the water, you know that if you go outside the buoys, you'll run your boat aground. If you mark your copy and you and you don't pay attention to your marks, you'll run your your delivery aground. Right. You ready to answer a few questions from our vast audience? Yes, absolutely. Uh, Anytime. Mr. Winner. All right. Well, we did actually get a question in here. We got a few of them stacking up. This one's from Grace Newton. First one, question for the panel, actually, with the current commercial trends requiring a conversational, genuine, believable read, why do you think some voice actors are having such an adverse reaction to the AI phenomenon? And what are your thoughts on AI in general? Well, I guess the impression is like human, <laughs> believable, natural, and all those things, conversational, genuine is not what we think of when we think of AI. No. Right? Really. So why are people freaking out? What I do you think? I just think don't. <laughs> i mean yeah if that's if that's what they want what should we be worried about ai taking those kinds of gigs yes i think so now i know dan and i this is one of the few things dan and i disagree with dan says don't worry and i say i'm sorry but but um uh any any job that replaces the human voice is one less job for somebody who does w w w what we do does that mean that we can change things that we can halt progress Unfortunately, no. The genie's out of the bottle. It's only getting better and better and better. I used to think I was such a naive idiot. I used to think, oh, you know, the human voice is is so. There's so many things going on there. They'll never be able to get and uh, to be able to approximate the human voice. I'm sorry if you've been listening to AI uh, voices lately. You'll be astounded at at, at how how much that technology has gotten better and it's only going to get better because they're only going to add more and more algorithms and more and more subtleties and more and more nuances. And I'm sorry, but it's easy now. I just realized to replicate the human voice rather than easier to replicate human facial expressions and body language. Right. But can they take, can AI take your direction? No, thank you. And, 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 and that is probably the, our They're last wow. last bastion of of <laughs> no no they they yeah. they yet yet they can't yet yeah. but yeah. then again if they ever can if they ever can take my direction we better be looking for other planets to to to, to, <laughs> yeah, right. to land on because as as, as uh, Stephen Hawking says once we do reach the the, the, uh, the what's what's it called the that point the singularity you know, the singularity. Yeah, once the singularity has been reached. There ain't no going back. We're screwed. Yeah. <laughs> we're Question screwed. from Tim Kelly. Very interesting. I'm a VO guy from Dublin, Ireland. Do you think it would be a good idea to use an American accent or just stay natural? I have what they call a, a mid-Atlantic accent. Anyway, it's just so difficult to compete with the North American accent it just sounds so great. Well, we'll take that as a compliment. Wow! I never, <laughs> Thank you very much. Anybody ever say that before? I, I'm <laughs> sorry, but 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 I always I, I I consider myself an honorary Irishman. So so uh, so so uh, as far as I'm concerned, uh, I think uh, uh, the Irish accent is is so much more beautiful than Americans. I know Americans who can out Irish Irish people. I know Brits who can out out american americans i know australians who can out american americans i know black people who can out white white people i know white people who can out black black people i there is so they're all roles right they're all they're it's all acting. roles if you can do a really killer american accent go ahead and do it if you've got the opportunity and if you don't then don't. But but uh, your your I'm sure that your speaking voice, your your natural speaking voice is 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 wonderful. But definitely definitely try other accents. And I, again, what Nicole Kidman when she first came to America, everybody thought she was American. She was she's Australian. She's an Aussie. Absolutely yeah. absolutely. No, if you can do a great uh, American accent, do it. I, one of my students is Irish, and and I got the best compliment of my life when I gave the, did my Irish accent, and he said, "You're an honor, you're an honorary Irishman." So so I was really really complimented with that, and he and I said, "Hey, you can practice your American stuff, and I'll practice my Irish stuff," and and that and it worked out great. Okay. No, go ahead and do American if you can nail it. If you can nail it, one of my recent tips was about accents. If you can do an accent really really well and sustain it. Go for it. If you are iffy, 
pass. Yeah. Don't Only be Van Dyke doing yeah. a Cockney accent. In yeah, Robbins. that's right. And if you think that you can do a good accent, bounce it off of somebody who's got the accent and say, is this good and is this passable? Because if they give you a thumbs down and say, your Cockney accent is the worst thing I've ever heard, don't do it. Work. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> Uh, one more here from Linda Joyce Minor, who says right. on YouTube. Hey, Linda. Uh, she says, uh, "Via folks think you get a lot of requests for friends, but on LinkedIn, it is the only way to get those tips. Please reassure folks because those tips are great." <laughs> oh, thank you, thank you, thank you so much. Um, uh, yeah, the uh, again, I uh, the tips are I I put it on LinkedIn, the regular LinkedIn, and then there are a bunch of voiceover um, uh, groups on there uh so that i post on on their on their pages as well but yeah. uh, but thank you thank you linda that's right. that's a very very sweet uh, sweet comment yeah um, so mark thanks for being with us today it's always great having you on and it's always fun pleasure. having you direct me i wish you could direct me more when i'm actually doing stuff because I, i'm like all alone when you I give it. me a heads up and we'll do it dan we'll heads definitely up. definitely do it gig. For, the, for the big gig for the big gig the big yeah. gig, the big gig. Mark, speaking yeah. of gigs uh uh, uh if, if it's okay just please i was I about to ask you one minute. I've got my last online class for 2021 coming up on October 23rd. It's a four-week class, and it goes to just before Thanksgiving, middle of uh, November. So October 23rd, my last online class for the year. So uh, we still have a few seats left. Um, what else is going on? I'm hoping, I'm keeping my fingers crossed that I can open up my Burbank studio in January and 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 people can actually be and it'll be it'll have been two years completely mm. which is insane um yes you have to have proof of vaccination but most people are are already taken care of there so that shouldn't be a problem so that's going to happen in january hopefully um and i've got some events coming up which are pretty wild um there's a voiceover conference in the philippines i've been asked to be a keynote speaker this month on the 25th uh, next month, I'm doing. I'm working with a group of voice actors in Nigeria, which is wild. So I'm going to be uh, working with them. And then in in December, I'm planning to to get together to have a joint uh, commercial workshop with one of the top voiceover coaches in Australia. And so we're doing a kind of a. Um, uh, it, it's going to be weird. Four in the after four till eight p.m. Saturday. Los Angeles time, which is 9 to 1 p.m., 9 a.m. to 1 p.m. Australia time on Sunday. So it's going to be, a you know, two days all at the same time. So it's Great. it's the closest we'll ever get to time travel. Yeah. Wow. Yeah. I know be kind of cool. So yeah. that's that's what I've got coming up uh, over the busy. next few months. And and uh, and I've been busier than a one toothed man at a corn on the cob eating contest. That's that's almost <laughs> as good as a one legged guy at an ass kicking contest. One of my personal favorites. <laughs> anyway, Mark, thanks so much for being with us tonight. Thank you, and, uh, Thank you for inviting me, guys. It's always I just I just love it. You guys. I'm so glad you came up with what you came up with, that you are continuing to do this. Every single person I've spoken to has said, oh, I saw you on VOBS. Oh, I've seen you on VOBS. So I'm, I'm, I'm partially famous because of you. So thank you. Well, we'll take credit where credit is due. <laughs> All right. George and I'll be right back to wrap things up uh, and get ready for Tech Talk right after this. Thanks, guys. You're still watching VOBS? In these modern times, every business needs a website. When you need a website for your voice acting business, there's only one place to go. Like the name says, voiceactorwebsites.com. Their experience in this niche webmaster market gives them the ability to quickly and easily get you from concept to live online in a much shorter time. When you contact voiceactorwebsites.com, their team of experts and designers really get to know you and what your needs are. They work with you to highlight what you do. Then they create an easily navigable website for your potential clients to get the big picture of who you are and how your voice is the one for them. Plus, voiceactorwebsites.com has other great resources like their practice script library and other resources to help your voiceover career flourish. Don't try it yourself. Go with the pros. VoiceActorWebsites.com, where your VO website shouldn't be a pain in the you-know-what. Well, it's that time where we talk about Source Elements, the yeah. creators of Source Connect. 
So Dan, yeah. has Source Connect been a tool that's been a part of any of your productions since the pandemic? Because it's been happening for you. A couple of times, a couple of times. You know, I have to use it. They say, you got to have Source Connect. I mean, no longer. Shows up on the script, right? It, it's like, well, and it'll show up on the specs. On the specs. On the Must specs, have Source right. Connect. The paid version. The paid version, right, exactly. Yeah. And so when we're talking about the paid version, we're talking about Source Connect Standard or Source Connect Pro. Now, Pro implies that you need to have it because you guys are pros. The pro version is really for the studio. They they use some of the extra features, like they can initiate what's called a Q restore replace session. What the heck is that anyway? Now, how many times have you been on a session using any of these remote technologies, Zoom, Ipdiddle, all these others, and they always tell you, please record a backup or please record. I know we're doing this over this thing and it sounds good. Please record it anyway and send it. I always do. The Q restore and replace thing is amazing. The Q manager it's called because what it's doing is recording your side of the conversation surreptitiously or really in the background. Hmm. It's just happening all the time. But if something happens during the session, let's say there's a little internet bobble, blob, drop out, whatever you want to call it. So what? Don't worry about it because the cue manager is recording your voice in the background. And as soon as that occurs, it fills in the missing audio in Pro Tools at the studio. So that's the Pro version does that for the producer or the studio. You can be on standard and have that feature work along in tandem. So wow. you don't need Pro version. You can get a subscription. You can sign up and get the subscription going, and then you get support, you get testing. They'll help you with port mapping. They really do everything as long as you've paid for a support plan. And if you just want to do a demo and go at it on your own, that's fine too. You can get a 15-day free trial and just kick the tires of Source Connect a little bit. But anyway, hopefully more Source Connect sessions coming for you in the future. Absolutely. Because those are the big paying ones, right? That's why you got to have it. Yeah. Anyway, we'll see you in a second. This is Ariana Ratner, and you're enjoying Voice Over Body Shop with Dan Leonard and George Whittem, VOBS.TV. Well, we're back to say goodbye and for a little bit. Yeah. You should stick around because we're going to do Tech Talk now. Yeah, that's if why you're, you're watching, watching live. live. Yeah. yeah. You know, if you're not watching live, oh, well. Um, next week, we're going to have Tech Talk number 65. Yep. If you can believe it, as we race through 2021 at breakneck speed. <laughs> anyway, who are our donors of the week? A lot of familiar names. I love it. Uh, Jill Goldman, Rob Ryder, Patty Gibbons, Antland Productions, Michelle Blanker, Christopher Epperson, Sandra Manweller, Philip Sapir, Trey Mosley, Thomas Pinto, Greg Thomas, Shauna Payton Baird, Martha Kahn, Don Griffith, Stephen Chandler, Robert Leadham, Michael Kearns, and Graham Spicer. Yay. I think we lost a name off that list because I was saying her name wrong too many times. I was right. probably like, forget this. Oh, no. <laughs> uh, you know what I'm talking about. No, no, no. Anyway, these names you see this often, it's because these folks are set up on an auto-renewing subscription right. basis using PayPal for as little as a dollar. You can do that by clicking on the donate button or just you can just drop a buck. You don't have to subscribe. Right. But, you know, it's a cheap way to get your name read on the show. And uh, we thank you. Appreciate the support. Right. Helps us be the technological marvel that we are here in our amazing studio. And uh, so it helps to have that. that thank stuff. you. Um, you can click the Donate Now button on our website, VOBS.TV. It's right underneath everything else is Donate Now. Click that. Set that up there. We need to thank our sponsors like Harlan Hogan's VoiceOver Essentials, VoiceOver Extra, Source Elements, VOHeroes.com, VoiceActorWebsites.com, and JMC Demos. Demos. Uh, thanks to Jeff Holman in the chat room tonight, uh, doing a great job getting those questions in. Of course, our amazing technical director doing it from her own place in Burbank. Thanks, Sue. Uh, you know, getting the direction down, getting the, the shots changed, all those sorts of things that you think are like, how do they do that? Sue sitting in her house in Burbank going, Dum. technology. Dum. Yeah. And of course, definitely Lee Penny for being Lee Penny. Well, that's going to do it for us this week for talking about voiceover. Tech Talk is next. Stay tuned for that. We want your questions. In the meantime, look, audio is not an easy thing to do, but if it sounds good, 
It is good. I'm Dan Leonard. And I'm George Widow. And this is voiceover. Body shop. Or VO. BS. 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 See you in a bit.